Make it or break it is this fight they kept on having for two weeks at the 50-day moving average. That's the make it or break it. Here, we're just trying to get baby steps. Here, we're just trying to... Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So now that May is here, right? We wanted to see what the market, uh, at least for the first couple days, can do after uh, the worst performing uh, month on the S&P lost almost 9% uh, lowest since uh, 2020 and the absolute uh, worst month uh, for the NASDAQ since uh, 2008, going back to uh, the mortgage crisis. And, you know, the market posted, I guess you could call it, right, back-to-back uh, -back, uh, up sessions, right? That's the best way uh, to say it. Is it, you know, are we getting anywhere? Uh, probably not, right? Uh, if you look at most channels, most names, uh, very, very tight, okay? Um, I, I think uh, the market is on pause, uh, waiting for the Fed to give us a little bit more kind of guidance of what happens next. Uh, you know, is there another rate hike uh, ahead of us for tomorrow? Probably, right? I think it's all uh, already been discussed, plans laid out. Now the question is, you know, how aggressive do they want to get? Do they want to go 25? Do they want to go 50? Uh, whatever the case may be. Again, as much as I would love to have a whole conversation about transitory inflation, yes, it's a word I used uh, now in a sentence, the word transitory. Um, you know, it is what it is, right? There's 3 million people have different opinions. It is what it is with inflation moving higher and gas moving prices uh, to the all-time universe highs and all that stuff. And they're squeezing the middle and lower class. It's very, very tough to get excited uh, about what the economy is holding. But again, it's not our job. We can't control uh, everything that is around us. The only thing we can control uh, is, well, our craft, right? Our craft, our trading, our ability to wait, our ability to strike when things are aggressive, when things are clear, uh, and when sentiment matches uh, technical analysis, and that's all it is. And what we've seen now for the last couple of days, you know, I, look, I, yesterday when I logged off, you know, the, the Dow was down, the NASDAQ was was down uh, 100 points uh, or so, but at the end of the day, you know, we had a nice little rally, you know, a nice little turnaround. Uh, again, the bull could turn around and say, well, that's it, you know, that was the, that was the tradable bottom, we're gonna go higher from here. The bear's gonna turn around and say, oh, dude, listen, we've been, you know, we were down for four and a half, five and a half hours, we rallied, uh, in the last half hour, everybody was gone. Yeah, they're both right, right? They're absolutely both right. And nothing, nothing, again, guys, remember, nothing is going to materialize uh, in any shape or form until number one, we get that uh, news out of the way tomorrow. But more important is kind of from the technical point of view. The Bulls did at least a good job today, right? Uh, reclaiming the five day moving average on a back to back victory. Again, call it what you want today. Green is green, the scoreboard is a scoreboard. Uh, the market had an opportunity, if you guys remember last Thursday, to kind of follow through to the upward bias, at least for one more day. And the next day, what happened was the next day was Friday. They failed to do so. Uh, the, net, the Dow towards the end of the week uh, on Friday lost 900 points. So tomorrow, let's see, can, you know, can we at least follow through, uh, get back to this 10-day moving average, and then slowly but surely we'll take baby steps. These are all questions that it's very, very tough to answer because there's there's not a lot of emphasis here. You, you could you could see it with your own eyes, uh, for the exception of uh, for the exception of today's session, we haven't had a back to back you know back to back since here right since uh, 418. And this is the complete breakdown uh, of this this Bollinger Band lower. So it's very very tough to get excited uh, one way or another. Most important is you, you got to look at it from the trading aspect point of view. There are no breakouts, right? There, there are absolutely very, very few stocks in, in any aspect of the market. The S&P, again, you could turn around for the oil trade, like a name, for example, like an Oxy, right? A name, for example, like Oxy looks good, right? And then you get for you know, a bunch of oils, you can make a case, hey, they look okay. They're not really tradable. Yeah, they're investing vehicles. You, worst case, you buy them two, three days. You, you use the previous day's low as you stop, but that they're not the darlings of Wall Street. It's technology, right? And the whole point of technology is two things are happening. Either stocks are way below their supply, and that pretty much goes for everything, or they're trying to get above supply, but there's just not enough room for them to go on this 
gargantuan gangbuster run because there's no emphasis. People don't believe this, and there's a good reason they don't believe this because, well, we're uh, way below supply. When you look at, that's just on the queues. When you look at the spies as well, right? Spies, you know, has just completely lost the 50 day moving average, traded down, put in a nice hammer, which is a little bit bullish. Traded up today. Okay, cool. Got rejected off the five-day moving average. So they couldn't even close above the five days. So I think tomorrow we'll have a little bit more kind of a guideline of what's going to happen maybe for the next day or so. Tomorrow, by no stretch of the imagination, is going to be a make it or break it for the market because we're not even close to that. You, you can look at any index in the world. Make it or break it is this fight they kept on having for two weeks at the 50-day moving average. That's the make it or break it. Here, we're just trying to get baby steps. Here, we're just trying to reclaim today's highs and going back to the 10-day moving average. Reclaim the 10-day, going to the 20 and on and on and on. But that is not here, not there. And it all kind of depends depends what happens uh, tomorrow with the Fed. The one thing that I, that I will say, you know, not too much to report today, right? When every when things are kind of in a holding pattern, okay, and everybody's kind of waiting for, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow with the Fed, as you can possibly imagine, there wasn't $85 moves one way or another. People are just sitting. People are just watching. People are just maybe uh, even positioning, even uh, even the options market today it was pretty quiet, and that is again understandable. Was there, you know, was there pivots for us to take advantage of? Only a couple, right? Literally only a couple. Uh, one of them is obviously the greatest stock in the world, and this is again when we talk about how why option flow is so duper super duper important when it comes to uh, facilitating a possible confirmation. It gives you a guideline where the institutional money flow is going. But other than that, there's really not a lot to talk about uh, for today. Session uh, after the close, you got a mixed bag of earnings. Uh, AMD, nice little quarter, you know, considering this whole uh, supply chain, uh, supply chain uh, status quo, right? AMD putting up a nice quarter. Uh, Airbnb, who got you know pretty beat up uh, throughout the day, uh, is rallying back a little bit uh, after the close. Not so lucky on the other side. Lyft is getting a, a pretty good. Uh, a pretty good haircut here. You can see his really, really big move down. Uh, Match.com, apparently my Tinder account has been suspended because I, I just don't understand. The stock is is going lower, but more important is, again, you can see the structural balance. Not here, not there. Nobody's really predicting, nobody's really making a point of reference of emphasis which way we're gonna go next. Again, for me, I don't need to guess, right? We don't need to try to figure out what's gonna happen, you know, what's gonna happen a month from now, a year from now. The only thing we care about is what happens tomorrow, right? And again, you could continue to continue to use the word sell bias, sell bias, sell bias until we at least start reclaiming the 10-day moving average and have a tradable, at least have a tradable little bit rally back to the 20-day supply. But as of right now, status is quo. It doesn't make a difference. The market's up a little bit today. The market's down a little bit today. The matter of fact is stocks were contracting the channels. There wasn't any emphasis. Like I mentioned before, the options market wasn't screaming, this is going to go this way, this is going to go that way. We're just pretty much in a holding pattern uh, waiting for tomorrow. And again, that's the discipline, right? You, you, you only trade when you get value. You only trade when you have clear channels. And this morning, when you look at... Um, you know, when you look at the Twitter feed this morning, you know, there was literally, I literally put what, three or four pivots. And I, and I, and I basically said, I go, look, you know, market rallied yesterday into the close and really messed up downside setups, right? Leaving us with very few tickers to the upside with room, right? That's the optimum word, room. Any stock can move up, but the point is, can stocks move up enough that there's range that you can take advantage of a trade? That's not the case with most stocks. Uh, and that's the kind of the, 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 that was the MO for the whole day. Just things were just not moving. Uh, and that was the, the bottom line. So, and I said, listen, I'll put additional pivots as they develop, especially Tesla. Tesla definitely saved the day today, right? Uh, definitely saved the day today. And it's obviously uh, one of the stronger names. So let's talk about today. Again, not a lot of room anywhere. Uh, Facebook, one of the very few that actually had a, I guess, a low ball uh, beat to, you know beat this quarter on earnings uh, 1250 13 needs to build again not a big move right the initial move is less than a dollar went up like a dollar and change went from that 11 uh, 1250 13 area ultimately to about 15 you know listen tomorrow if we follow through can it get to 17 18 yeah I think it can but again 
very, very tough to get excited. This isn't exactly, you know, this isn't exactly the go-to pattern structure of a stock. You know, normally, you know, when a market is good, the last thing I want to be is in anything that is gapped down uh, several times in, in, into their into their quarter and now trying to recover. But again, beggars can't be choosers, and this is definitely uh, one of the aims that at least has a little bit of visual room. Uh, that you could take advantage of. So, you know, nice, you know, nice little pop there on Facebook. Uh, Netflix never got to uh, 205. I really thought we were gonna have a. I, I, I really thought we were gonna have a pivot today on 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 um, on Docu. Right? They got downgraded today by Wedbush. 81 is the pre market low for experienced trader. However, this needs to confirm the daily 80 30 80, and if it builds below, can flush potential of 77. It never even confirmed. Docu, it, it's the most the wildest thing. Docu traded down to 81.17. And all it did was literally from the word go, just it actually went green at some point. So it never came close to even uh, confirming to the downside, which I thought was uh, extremely puzzling, but it is what it is. Uh, this is the one that definitely saved the day. 9.11 uh, Tesla, 9.11 needs to build. This is one that we talk about how important the, the importance of option flow is. We started seeing uh, the 9.75, we started seeing the thousand weeklies come in and Tesla took out this whole channel here, right? Took out this whole channel here and went from 9.11 all the way to the 9.24 daily measured potential. And why was it 9.24? That was the 150-day uh, supply zone. So again, Tesla continues to be even in the tightest ranges. Uh, continues to be just a just a godsend. That's the only thing I, I could say. Just a godsend. When this thing is finally going to go higher, it needs to confirm last what was it last uh, Thursday or last Friday's uh, high. So if it could con confirm the 50-day moving average, then this thing could wake up. But again, we're we're far away from that. The most important thing is again just take it. Uh, one day at a time. So again, uh, nothing really. I think that's about it, right? NVIDIA, uh, towards the end of the day, it exploded. Uh, excuse me. It spiked up after the close uh, on AMD's earnings. Uh, stock is moving above uh, that level right now. But that's it. I mean, that's it. And sometimes, uh, again, you know, as much as uh, social media feeds you the whole thing about, you know, everything's moving, that's moving, that's moving, this moving. I don't know what market you're looking at, but, you know, anybody that has been trading for a very long time knows that value is value. Not value is quantity, value is quality. And that's the most important thing that we lack today is quality. But that's this one, right? You sit because you are waiting for measured potential, not because you're dying or itching uh, for a trade. That's called gambling. That's called an addiction. And that's something you might uh, want to see uh, somebody about. But that's it, guys. It all comes down to uh, Fed Day tomorrow. Is it possible we have a gangbuster uh, two, three hours before the Fed? Fingers crossed, right? But there's also a possibility that we're just sitting there playing with our hands until the Fed comes out with the numbers. Again, these are things that every professional trader is going to be all watching exactly the same way. I promise you, my you know my view of the market is going to be exactly the same as yours and vice versa. So all of us are in the same boat. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. And with all this help, we'll see each other tomorrow. Take care.